everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. Let's play with some resin, shall we? <laughs> Specifically, let's play with these beautiful, rich luster pigments from resin art. I've pulled out Glacier Ice, Wild Jasmine, Dragon Gold, Green Apple, and Belize Blues. And I'm super excited to put them down on this piece of MDF and see what we can get. For this project, I want my background to be black to start out with. I think that'll make the colors really pop. So I'm going to paint my piece of MDF black, but for the edge, I'm going to go with a gold so that it coordinates with the dragon gold that I'm going to be using as an accent throughout the piece. At least that's the plan. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how that goes. But you know what? I'm not so sure about whether or not I'm going to uh, want the resin just to sit up top. I may let it run over the side. We'll see what happens. But I'm not building a dam. I did tape up the back with electrical tape. And one of the things I really like about electrical tape is that it turns the corners really easily. So you don't have to keep cutting little pieces and little pieces like you have to do with... Um, blue tape so that's one of the reasons I really enjoy using that but like I said I didn't set up a dam so if the resin runs over the side which it likely will I'm gonna be okay with that these are all experiments so I'm good really with whatever happens alrighty now I've got my resin uh, in the cup I haven't mixed it yet so I'm gonna do that and I'm using clearcast 7050 now with my resin mixed, I'm just going to add a little bit in a few of these little mixing cups to mix some up some colors. What I tried doing was putting a little bit of powder first in the cup and thought I would do that with all the cups and then put the resin. And that was not the best idea because when I tried putting the powder in the cup, I guess the static of the silicone started making the powder shift all over the place and blow all over the place. So I thought, oh, okay, lesson learned on that. So I'm gonna put the resin in first and then add the powder because I think that will be less messy. <laughs> I mixed up 90 milliliters of resin, which I think is probably more than I need, but... So these little cups hold about 10 milliliters of liquid or resin in this case each i'm thinking that should be enough of each individual color it takes a very little amount of this pigment or paint system really to color resin so this is such a tiny amount and probably actually more than i need for such a tiny amount of resin but i like rich color so I'm going to show you the size of this little tiny spoon next to my fingertip so you can see how small it is. And I didn't have a heaping spoon. I literally leveled off the spoon and that's all I put in here. And then let's see. One of the things I love about this stuff too is how quickly it goes in. It mixes so easily into resin. And look at that color. Oh my gosh. It's like neon pink. And I had already mixed up the green. I poured the blue into the cup. Let's do that really quickly. Ugh, these colors are just divine. Really, the, my favorite pigments to use. Now I'm mixing Glacier Ice. This is probably my favorite color because, you know, it's kind of an aqua teal color. You know, that always makes me happy. And then this is the Dragon Gold. This is my first time using this color. Ooh, that is very rich. Wow. It's kind of... I don't even know how to describe this color. It's kind of bronzy, I guess. But, oh my word. Mm. Okay, and then one of the things I decided also is we should try adding a little bit of white and see what happens. 
So I've pulled out Casting Craft Opaque White. It has a very small opening at the top so that you can really dispense just a drop at a time. I really want an opaque white and I want more than that. Yeah, now I have a good opaque white. Now I debated whether or not I wanted my base color to be black resin or clear resin and I'm opting for clear. So I'm just going to spread a little bit just to help the resin that I put down flow more easily. I'm going to start out with some green, then some blue, a little aqua, some of this crazy pink, oh my word, and I think just gonna drizzle a little gold here for now, just to see. I don't wanna commit to a lot of gold just yet. Since I've never used it before, I don't know how it's going to play with everybody else. <laughs> and then definitely some white. And now let's see about moving things a little bit. After the first round of heating and moving things, I decide to add more glacier ice, or what I keep referring to as the aqua. I also double up on the white, add some more of that rich blue, and I commit to some more gold. At this point, I abandon the idea of having black show through much at all. So, I almost didn't need to paint the background black. A little more heat, air, and some more tilting. And I'm liking the movement that's starting. How the white winds through the pretty metallics. But then I ask myself, is this just going to be pretty colors intermingled on an oval board? I mean, that could be nice and all, but then, well, would that be all we end up doing in this video? Nah. So then I get an idea, but it's going to require going a bit nuts at first. <laughs> I'm going to make a bit of a mess. But there is a plan behind it, so stick around, even if you lose a little faith at first. And, and I wouldn't blame you if you do. It's going to look a little um, uh, unattractive. <laughs> yeah, it's going to look unattractive for a while. <laughs> for this to work, I need a lot of color and texture, and I need a very busy canvas. So let's do that. I start out by adding more color. I drizzle everything all over the place with no real rhyme or reason. What's awesome is that even though I'm not paying attention to what's going where really, these resin art colors remain beautiful. Even when they mix and, and blend, they're still gorgeous. I love how the dragon gold glows when it mixes with other colors. I also love how the added white softens things and makes the pops of the metallic of these beautiful pigments seem even more shimmery. And then for the last crazy step, I take the clear that I had left over and I proceed to drizzle that over everything. What that's going to do is it's gonna cut crevices or valleys like into everything. The clear is gonna sink through the colors and give everything a real 3D look. A little heat to pop some obvious bubbles. But I'm not too worried about a perfect finish because I'm planning a top coat for this. All right, let's take a look at this before it cures. 
and I'll let you try and guess what I'm going to be doing with this crazy mess. <laughs> So it's the next day and the piece is cured and I really am happy with the fact that I've gotten some good sort of veining running through from the clear that I poured at the end and that I have some nice variation of color in spots, some interesting little texture type things happening. But overall, the piece is kind of weird looking and I don't care. My goal was to have lots of color mixed up all over the place and like interesting little pockets of pattern and color next to each other. So why did I make this crazy mishmash of color? Well, sometime last year, I made an acrylic pour that I turned into a pile of rocks with a little bit of black paint and a little bit of white paint. Well, I've wanted to try that with resin as the stones this time. So I'm going to approach the making of the stone shapes in a similar but different way. I'm not going to draw temporary lines like I did on the painting on the, on the acrylic pour. I drew lines where I wanted each of my stones and then I carefully painted black in between the delineated stones that I'd sort of sketched out for myself. Instead, for this piece, I cut up some contact paper or shelf liner into varying size stone-like shapes. And what I'm gonna do is sort of look for spots that interest me, that I'd like to have be in a stone. And I will make sure that I encompass whatever that interesting spot is with a stone and I will cover it with contact paper and I will do that throughout. And once I'm done, I'll be able to easily paint in my black areas because I'll just paint over the whole thing. So that's what I'm going to do. Did any of you guess that was the plan? Let me know in the comments what you thought was going to happen. Now for all of you who are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe. And for any of you who haven't already done it, also click on the bell so that you can know as soon as I post a new video, including the conclusion to this one. <laughs> I continue laying out my stone pattern. I make sure to have stones overlap each other. It makes for added work later when it comes to painting in everything, but it's so worth it. It really adds to the 3D look. The advantage of using the contact paper to plan out everything is, is that it lets me move things around very easily as I work out the composition or the stone layout in this case. There's no erasing necessary like I would have to do if I'd painted in my preliminary outlines and then I wanted to make a change. Moving the contact paper is way easier. My last step for this half will be to sand down just a little bit the exposed resin to give it some tooth for the black paint coming up in the next video. To see how this all turns into the look of a tray of sparkly gemstones, tune in tomorrow morning. In the meantime, make sure to join my Facebook group for ideas, advice, resources, and more from viewers from all over the world. We'd love to have you come and share what you make too. Remember to always let your creative nature shine. Here are the acrylic pour turned into stone videos I mentioned earlier to let you compare how those were done. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye now.